Hello again and welcome to James Engineering. I wanted to take a few moments to talk to you about a major problem in the industry. A lot of the parts manufactured today are not round. This thing looks round, it is not round. It's not the same width as it is the height. For example, this forging right here. Nothing about it is uniform. So now we're not talking about round, but we're talking about a part from one part to the next where these surfaces aren't in the same place. So what I'm about to tell you and show you is how our compliant technology works with all of these non-uniform parts that still to this day, until you meet James Engineering, require hand to burn. People are trying to put vision systems on robots to see this mismatch. They're trying to get CNC's to have fancy mathematical equations to do all of this stuff. It's not working. It hasn't worked for 40 years. So what James Engineering decided 40 years ago is to develop compliant technology. Compliant technology is doing basically what your human hand does when it comes down to the surface. It's finding that surface, but not really knowing where that surface is. I don't have to look back to find the surface right now. My hand is going back and it's compliant, and I'm just gonna keep going back until I touch it. So we created and patented compliant technology and we've refined it now for 40 years. And what that compliant technology now allows us to do is not to use laser measuring devices and not to use fancy mathematical algorithms and not to try to use vision systems. We're now mechanically sensing where that surface is in real time. When we're talking about compliance with regard to like uh, burning parts. Compliance is really important if you're working with a perishable tool and that perishable tool is wearing at an unknown rate. So in the deburring world, most of the tools that we're using are going to be like a, uh, a grinding wheel, a scotch brite, a sanding paper, sanding disc, something like that. And the issue with these products is they don't wear at uniform rates. You can pull the same product out of the same box and it's going to wear at an incredibly different rate. So General Motors here a bunch of years back, we had an issue where we were using a nylon brush and we brought, uh, we got two brushes out of a box. So they were out of the same batch and one brush lasted about 1200 parts and the other brush lasted 1500 parts. So the issue was um, we didn't have a way to predict that wear. Now, because of our fundamental technology, our patented uh, compliant technology, we didn't have a problem with this. But GM came to us because other people did have a problem with this. They didn't have a way to write an algorithm, a mathematical equation to predict the discrepancy in wear between those two brushes. There also wasn't a good way to use a laser measuring device because the cycle was several moments long. But the problem was, is the brush was wearing during that cycle at different rates. So what would happen is what we call over-engage or under-engage. So as the brush wears at a dissimilar rate from the next brush or from one part to the next part, the brush is always changing diameter with every revolution. The same as this scotch Brite is, the same as any grinding wheel is or any sanding disc. Every single revolution, they're changing diameter, changing shape. What really uh, starts to become the problem is if you're grinding on a surface and you're wearing at a rate and your mathematical equation thinks you're wearing slower than you really are, then it buries the perishable tool in the part, which is what we call over-engage. If the mathematical equation thinks you're wearing faster, then all of a sudden your perishable tool's wearing out and you're predicting that with this equation or this uh, laser measuring system, and you end up wearing the perishable tool out faster than you predicted, then all of a sudden the perishable tool's move, losing the part altogether. So it creates this real problem. So there is no real good solution out there. You see robots fight with this all the time and you see CNC's fight with this all the time. By having this compliant device, every revolution of that perishable is changing. We're moving down to the contact surface, compensating for it, but we're not using uh, math, we're not using lasers, we're not using vision. We're just mechanically reacting to it. Okay, we talked about inconsistent wheel work, but now let's couple that with and inconsistent part. Well, how do we get inconsistent parts? Everything's drawn to 3D models um, and it's machined in CNC machines. Yes, that's true. So for example, if I take this part right here and it's machined on a CNC machine, 
it's fairly small. There's not any real big cuts in this part, so that means this part isn't gonna stress relief much. It's still gonna stress relief, especially if you heat treat it, it's gonna start moving around. Maybe a few tens to a couple bounces. But if we get to a part where we're removing large amounts of metal, so if we completely gun drilled this part, we might start getting some stress relief in this part. CNC's or robots or anything like this are very black and white. They're expecting the part to match the 3D model. So what happens? Well, what happens is you start getting things that people call mismatch. How do you eliminate that mismatch? You can't go correct it, but you do have to send a customer a part that you don't have all of these mismatch features all over it. So what you do is you send it off to some human somewhere to hand to burn this and to use their eyes and their hands to massage the part to where the mismatch is blended. It doesn't mean that the mismatch is gone. What it means is that parting line where the mismatch happened has been blended away so it's not obvious. That could be a problem with a little bit of mismatch. But now, if you get into parts, let's say bigger parts. We're working on a job right now for the hinge beam that holds the engine on in a wing of an aircraft. So that hinge beam starts off as uh, about 750 pounds. It's a piece of aluminum and it's machined down to where it's almost 75 pounds. 600 and change, 675 or something pounds is taken out of this part. Well, what happens is, is this part's like uh, five foot long. Um, it's about two foot, uh, about 12 inches by about two foot. So when you go machine all of this material out of it, that part starts twisting and warping and doing all kinds of stuff. It no longer matches the model, but it's not just by a few thousandths now. It's moving by probably eighths of an inch. So now what happens in the CNC world is as you're machining this part and doing all these different ops on there, you start getting mismatch all over the part. Some of these mismatches are up to five or 10 thousandths now, so they're much bigger. The CNC doesn't know how to cope with this. Why did that mismatch happen in the first place? Well, the mismatch happened in the first place because the part stress relieved, it no longer matches the model, and the end mill either over-engaged or under-engaged. Another place that this becomes a problem, it's, it's maybe not what we call stress relief, but it's still a problem, is in stampings and forgings. Forgings are anything but the same each time, but you get you get parting lines, forgings, castings, die cutter, uh, die castings, all of this stuff. You get parting lines. These forgings, as good as they are, that surface is not where you planned on it being. It's underneath the model, it's above the model. It, it's anything but what you expect it to be, so it's a nightmare to deburr off that parting line. Or for example, like a stamping. So here I've got a stamping. It looks all nice and round, right? It's anything but round. What we have here, is once they stamp this and then they go put it all together, if you measure across from here to here and then from here to here, you've got almost an eighth of an inch of out around. How do you deal with that? Robots will struggle, CNC's will struggle. So what this particular customer is doing is they're going back to a lot of hand to burn because nothing can compensate for the inconsistency. These things are not consistent from one to the next. Each one is a little bit different. One's different out around, one's a different diameter. They actually warble on the rotary table too. They actually are out of round this way. So we've got things that aren't only uh, not round, they're oval. So the measurement from side to side to top to bottom is not the same, but it actually is out around this way and it's actually out around this way. So let me show you what I mean. So now as you look at that part right there, you can see that anything about it is not true whatsoever. You can see that thing sitting there warbling and you can see it out around. So how does our compliant technology work? Well, what our compliant technology does is we have a non-servo controlled axis now that comes down and finds the surface no matter where it's at. So I can write with this machine an extremely precision recipe. This machine will repeat to within uh, a thousandth and it'll repeat part to part within a few tenths. So our accuracy is within a thousand, but repeatability is within a few tenths. But if this part isn't round, we got a real problem. We got the same problem that a CNC or a robot has. So how James Engineering deals with it was, is with this patented compliant technology. So what I'll do now is I'll put uh, a downward force on this. You'll see it engage the part. So now it's engaged the part. So imagine if we're in a cycle now. 
This perishable tool is going to change diameter with every single revolution. You're going to see dust coming off of it, so we can't predict the wear. We aren't going to use a laser system or a vision system. It just doesn't work where we're shooting all of these sparks and doing all of this stuff. And if we start throwing water in here, that's just not a viable solution. So we react to the surface in real time. So when I go and I spin this stainless steel pan again, you're going to notice that this tool now, it just stays in contact. So now you can see that with just a little bit of out around there, we've got almost an eighth of an inch of warble to it, and we've got an eighth of an inch of out around, and we've got, you know, the height changing too, that our perishable tool is staying in uniform contact with the part. So what you're gonna see when we run this cycle is you're gonna see that all of these perishable tools use our compliant technology, and they adjust to that surface in real time. How do you do that with CNC's and robots? You don't. They've been trying, they aren't doing it. Robots are great for picking things up and moving them from place to place. This particular customer that's deburring these uh, pans right here, they're use, trying to use robots right now and they're going away from it because they're using the robots so much to, that they have to readjust them almost every day. That's not a viable solution. So this is your solution. So watch our cycle now and you'll see during our cycle, that that pan is anything but round, it's warbling, it's doing all kinds of weird stuff, but we're getting a uniform result. When you look at the result, that wheel's constantly in contact with uniform pressure, and we're blending out the issue, and now it looks like a precision device. I hope this helps.